Hey, how's it going? It is the Morning Star Drive, 117.8. This is Sky, and this is the second day. I know it's Wednesday, March 18th, and everyone's having a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope that everyone can really get themselves to uh, just kind of relax as we're driving here to work. And for those of you who are in lockdown, that's a bit different. Okay, so it is the 18th. It is a Wednesday. Uh, it is, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy because in Malaysia, uh, the lockdown begins today right the lockdown what does that mean lockdown i believe is like uh people in malaysia can't fly out uh foreigners can't come in uh i believe only grocery stores banks and i think there's something else that is always going to be those are like these are the only things like essentials are the only things that uh are going to be left open and everything else is closed uh this lockdown uh it's going to go for about two weeks until the 31st uh, of march so I hope that uh, everyone uh, don't worry so much about the food. I know like, you know, yesterday I told you people are like crazy going to over toilet paper. Um, the grocery stores are going to be open during this entire time. So please do not freak out. Just get the food when you're ready to get the food. There's no shortages in food here in Malaysia. Uh, those of you, I know that um, now that the, the borders are closed, even to Singapore, Singapore's uh, uh, Singaporeans are probably going to come in and uh, grab as much food as they can before uh, Malaysia closes also. I hope that uh, everyone has a wonderful lockdown, and I know that a lot of you aren't going to work. Very few are, uh, but I want you guys also to enjoy your time in this lockdown, having and uh, thinking about other things. Now, uh, before I get into uh, this, uh, before I get into the music first, just to kind of get everyone going today, there's something very interesting because I forgot to tell you why. Um, I forgot to tell you the uh, one of the special reasons behind one of the songs we have, right? And you heard the song yesterday, right? It was called "Together with the Lord." It's a Sumni Boys and uh, with with uh, Mariah. So l l you know, let me see if you remember this. We believe in the same God, but we are on different levels. Right? You guys uh, remember this song from yesterday? Uh, the song is called. So this song is called uh, "Together with the Lord." Okay. And uh, the reason why I bring this up is because it is a very special song, especially to me when I was uh, church leading over there in, uh, in New York. Uh, what happened was we had this retreat, I believe, in 2018. And it, you know, uh, Sunsim gave us, uh, I think it was 2017 or 18. I think it's 18, right? And Sunsim gave us the title, and it was uh, Chua Hamke, or like Together with the Lord. And uh, we asked the Sumni boys to help us out. And guess what? They made this song for the retreat, right? So the Sumni boys, which uh, those of you who know is like Mike Jr. and also Andrew. And then Mariah is Mike Jr.'s younger sister. And they did this song just, it's like, I would, say, I would call this song the perfect summer song, okay? And, uh, it's, you know, and even when Mariah sings, you'll, you'll hear it in the chorus it says like Jua. She even says it in Korean like Jua Hamke, right? So uh, uh, that's the one thing I forgot to tell you about yesterday. Uh, but today, of course, we want to get into some music first, uh, something to get uh, the blood pumping. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, we're gonna kind of feature a Sumni Boy song today, okay? And the Sumni Boy song we're gonna hear is called "Pink Sunset." I'm not sure if you guys have heard this from the Game Time album, but it's called "Pink Sunset." And the thing cool about this one is uh, I was talking to the Sumni Boys uh, the other day, and they told me kind of the story behind it. And it was Mike Jr. was driving. I'm not sure where he was going to, but as he was driving, he saw this beautiful pink sunset, and. Uh, he said, like, the feeling, uh, the automatic feeling was he felt the Holy Spirit was talking to him. And the most interesting thing was, um, the, the interesting thing was, was the inspiration he got from the Holy Spirit was, have you done everything you can? And of course, if you, if you get the inspiration from the Holy Spirit asking you, have you done everything you can, it kind of makes you want to do more and it, wants, it makes you want to work harder, right? So if you listen closely to this song in the second verse is when Mike Jr. raps, um, that's kind of uh, that feeling he's going to give off. He's going he's gonna to sing it. He's going to rap it in that second verse and you're going to kind of get that feeling of him and the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, but, you know, when Mike Jr. saw the sunset, he's like going to Andrew. He's like, Andrew, if you would have seen that sunset, oh my gosh, it was just like so inspiring. And, uh, Crazy enough, last year on March 16th, right? So just like basically a year and two days ago, right? Uh, they had a mini concert in Houston. And right after the concert, the two of them went outside. And boom, another pink sunset. And Mike Jr., the first thing he says is, that is the sunset that I saw. And when Andrew was able to see it, he was inspired. 
And he was able to come up with the music for this song after seeing that same sunset that Mike Jr. saw. So that's the inspiration behind this song. So we're going to feature today's song by the Sumney Boys. It's called Pink Sunset. I hope you enjoyed that. And the second song right after that will be, once again, Dia Wings. And uh, they're going to sing the song round and round. So let's start first with the Sumney Boys and Pink Sunset. Again, 
것처럼 정해져 버린 나는 그대 주의 맴도는 빛나는 별 순간의 어둠에 헤매여도 다시 자석처럼 이끌리는 강력한 satellite 어디로 가는지 이래도 되는지 망설이던 찰나 돌고 돌아온 한 땀에 아 결국 찾아낸 여 유유 And that is Dio Wings with Round and Round. And of course, right before that, we listened to The Somni Boys and Pink Sunset. I hope that everyone uh, enjoyed those two tracks. As we begin this Lockdown Wednesday, I'm, I'm not sure if I should call this from now on Lockdown Wednesday, but uh, this Lockdown Wednesday, very, very interesting because a lot of us weren't expecting this and we were expecting this at the same time. Uh, very, very, um, actually for me too, I think, uh, no one has really experienced this before in their life, having a lockdown in the country. Uh, most of us are probably have to stay home. And if you want to meet with each other, uh, you probably have to meet at the hypermarket or something, right? Like, you know, meet while you're shopping or something because uh, everything else is going to be closed and the governance can be pretty strict on it. And, you know, I, sh I just want to bring up uh, why things are happening the way they are. Okay. So, you know, um, why do we need to do this? And, and I'm going to show you a chart on the screen just to show you uh, what is actually happening here. Okay, so if you take a look at the screen, this is kind of why we do this social distancing. Okay, so a lockdown is like a very extreme uh, way of doing social distancing. Now, the, when you look at this, uh, when you look at this chart, there's two curves. Okay, there's a really tall curve and there's a flat, like the, you know, kind of a low curve, right? Like a really high mountain and a low mountain. Now, do you see that dotted line in the middle? Well, it's near the bottom. There's a dotted line, right? And that dotted line, if, if you look at that, that is uh, the maximum capacity of what your hospitals in your country can actually handle, 
okay? So the one thing that's very interesting about these two curves that you see, the red one and the, and the black one, right? They both have the exact same amount of people that are infected. Okay, so it's the exact same. The only difference is when you do social distancing, what's happening is you're spreading those people slowly along the curve. And why is that important is because uh, you're allowing your medical system to have enough staff and support and beds for the people who are in critical condition and less people will die. The people who are in serious critical condition, these people can all receive uh, kind of the... They, they receive all the help that they can get. And the reason why it's, it's, uh, this, this um, social distancing is happening right now with the lockdown is because if you look at the red curve, the red curve is very interesting. It's super high, but you see how far it is above that line, the maximum capacity of your hospitals and your medical system to handle, right? And the crazy part is it's the exact same amount of people. It's just that if it's uncontrolled and everyone is hanging out, like, you know, we, we heard what happened here in Malaysia. I'm not sure if everyone else here knows what's hap what happened in Malaysia, why we're all of a sudden spiking. Uh, there was some type of like ministry or evangel. Like, I'm not evangelistic, but there was some type of like reach out event for Muslims here in um, in uh, SP, right? Sri Pataling, I think, somewhere around that area, and like six. 15,000 Muslims gathered for this meeting, right? So if you really think about it, it's crazy because this was last week. Last week, 16,000 Muslims, and I believe people from overseas was only like 1,500, something along that line. But the crazy part was 16,000 people were meeting at this time. And guess what? One person was infected. We don't know how many others were infected, but from this point on, uh, these infections are just kind of skyrocketing. I, I believe in um, uh, Malaysia, we're probably, you know, we're already like 566 from uh, Tuesday, which means today, Wednesday, it's going to hit like 600 to 700 for sure. Right, we'll probably may maybe get over 700, maybe even to 800 if it's going to be that much higher. Uh, this is why the lockdown has been put in place. Uh, a lot of craziness happening because once people heard there was a lockdown, uh, if you look at my Instagram, that's uh, psky8. I put the pictures up. We went there. I talked about it yesterday. No toilet paper. What about people who really need it? Right? Like, this is crazy, right? People go on out buying all the toilet paper, but, every, you know, during this time of the lockdown for two weeks from the, t uh, the 18th to the 31st, there's more than enough food. I just don't know why people are going out. Now, the one thing I do say is um, this good thing about social distancing we're doing right now is like staying away from large groups. I know in America, uh, the recommendation for the next eight weeks is going to be meetings under 50 people. Uh, but to be honest, uh, yesterday I was talking about this person who's from the, he's a director of the Center for Infectious Disease uh, Research and Policy. And his name, I told you yesterday I was going to find it for you. His name is Michael Austin Holm. Okay, and he wrote, he's already written books about uh, infectious disease, pandemics, epidemics and stuff. And he's been like crying about it for a long time because, you know, we're just not ready for it. And as you can see from this, you know, if you even look in America, they're not ready for it, right? They're just not ready for it. So, uh, you know, Michael Austin Holm, right? The director of the CIDRAP, right? Uh, and basically, uh, he's the one kind of giving you like the reality of the situation. And he wants people not to be scared into panic, but he wants people to be, to be scared into doing the right thing, right? And he says this flattening the curve is a very, very, very important thing, okay? It's very important. Why? Because you want to flatten out the curve so that your hospitals are equipped and ready to take everyone. What happens if, if we hit that red curve where it's just it just goes out of control, then basically people who need help will not get it and many people are going to die because we don't just we just don't have enough help. Uh, if that makes sense, right? So, even for right now the social dis distancing is a very very good thing. Right, it's a very, very good thing, and I hope that everyone understands this very carefully. Uh, that will really get ourselves to understand what is happening right now in the world, and, and in Malaysia, Singapore, all the places. You know, it's kind of going well. Like, I'll tell you right now, like, um, for in two weeks, you know, like China was like so far ahead, like eighty thousand people that are infected. Um, within two weeks, the number of people infected outside of China. It doubled 13 times in two weeks. And now that's why we have so many more people that are infected outside of China more than in China, right? So we're already over 180,000 people infected. And you know what? It's gonna, By the time uh, you guys listen to this, it's probably going to be 190 or even 
possibly even 200,000, already over 7,000 deaths. But what's even crazier is it's like three countries or even four, yeah, three countries have like 80% of the deaths, which is China, Italy, and Iran. And those just those three countries itself hold 80% of the deaths. Right. Uh, like every day, the countries that are like just growing, the having the largest increase in cases every day is like it's, it's very interesting because these countries are all like, you know, like European first world countries like Italy is number one. And, you know, th th yesterday it was like over thirty two hundred people, more people infected. France is over twelve hundred. Germany had over a thousand. America had nine hundred. Spain had seven hundred and fifty. So these are all like these first world countries. Right. And, and this is interesting because I wasn't going to talk about this first, but I, I'm, this, is, this is something so interesting because, you know, doing a little bit of research and especially us in Providence, we're wondering why, you know, like we wondered the spiritual thing behind what is happening. And I did a little bit of research just kind of looking at Christianity in these different countries, especially like uh, the U.S., Germany, Italy and France. And what's yeah, so uh, when you when you look at the research, you know, I was like trying to look at spiritual research first more than anything else, and you know just look at the U.S. Uh, because you know I'm basically I live there and uh, I'm from Canada, which is right next door, and you know I was I was born and raised in American Providence, right? And I was looking from the 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 Pew Research Center, and they have these stats about religion in the U.S. and uh, it, it, it's it's pretty shocking, like. Uh, just the decline in people who are Protestant and Catholic is like continually declining while people who are non-religious and going into non-Christian faith is inclining. Everything else, Protest the, the Protestant people, with, pe Protestants are, are declining. Catholics are declining while non-religion and non-Christian faiths are on the incline. Right. There's the Journal of Scientific Study of Religion, and they, they kind of do uh, they do stats on people, uh, how much people attend church. Right. And uh, crazy thing is, in America, guess what percentage of people actually attend church regularly, like weekly? And the number is 22%, right? This is from the Journal of Scientific Study of Religion. 22%, only 22% are actually attending church weekly, regularly, right? So if you think about this, it's, it's really, really low. And I, I, it gives some stats from other countries. Like, you know, when you look at France, France is another country that's, that's like, you know, that's con it's, it's right, right behind Italy. And in France, it's scary because it's only 15% attend church regularly. The UK only has 10%, right? I, I was looking at some other stats about Germany too, about German, Germany. You know, Germany is where the Protestant Reformation started with Martin Luther, Right, the Sunstein was there in Germany, and you know he was the one praying for for the the unity and 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 and, and for the Protestant faith and the Catholics to get back together. Right, and that was in 1999. I went to visit Germany when Sunstein was there too, and I look at the stats right now. It's really scary because, uh, interestingly, in Germany, you remember the Protestant faith started from there from Martin Luther. Sixty percent of Germans identify as Christian. Okay, so that's like wow, that's a pretty high number. Sixty percent. However. If out of the Catholics, only 10% actually practice their faith or attend church, only 10%. And this is even crazier. For Protestants, only 3% actually attend church in Germany. And that is a stark difference when you look at this country that used to be so love, in love with God where the Protestant Reformation started. Right. Italy is crazy, too, because when I look at the in November 2019, there was a survey done by uh, Ipsos. Right. And uh, people in Italy uh, who, you know, they're mainly Roman Catholic and people who attend service once a week, right, in the last 10 years has dropped 7% from 21% attending once a week to 14. Only 14% 14 are actually attending church once a week. And what's even crazier is people who are now non-believers, they don't, they're not, they don't go to church anymore. It skyrocketed from 14% to 27%. So almost a third of, of, uh, of Italy is not believing in God. They're, they're non-believers. And it's even higher uh, of the people, of the 27%, it's especially the youth, right? In uh, France, man, like France is crazy because it's a little bit higher than Italy, but already a third, uh, a third of the French uh, say that they have no religion. A third, that's 33%. Right, thirty-three percent don't have a religion, and only five percent are attending church regularly. 
right? And when you when you think about this, these are these are pretty crazy stats, uh, because you know this is a time where God is talking about. You know, this is a time where where judgment comes. And it was in this week's message, right? In this week's message, what does Sunseem say? Well, actually, today's Tuesday morning message. Sunseem says that you know, think about it. If you love, right? If you love, if you love someone, you are going to correct them and you're going to judge them or punish them. And you're like, what? You're going to punish because you love? And the answer is yes, because you don't want them to be like that. You got to think about this carefully, right? Uh, if you have no interest in someone, you don't care what they do, right? If, if you don't like spitting and someone spits on the ground, but you have no idea who they are, you don't care. But if it's your own child who's spitting or smoking or swearing, doing drugs, like all those things, if it's bad and if you love them, are you really going to like just let them go? Are you going to tell them, say, hey, you shouldn't, you know, my son, my daughter, you shouldn't be doing that. And it's really true because part of love is love is because you love them so much, you want to see them do well. Right. So what I'm, you know, uh, what I want to do is I want to I want to lead into another song uh, because this is something that I, I think that we have to do all the time because in this world right now there are so many people confessing that they don't, you know, they they don't love God anymore. Right. Too many people are confessing that, you know, they don't believe. But we have to be the ones uh, that take this confession to the Lord. So uh, what we're going to do is take a look at this. Uh, we're going to have a, a song, and it's going to be My Confession to the Lord.
And that is my confession to the Lord. And uh, that's a wonderful praise song. And I hope that this could be something that we can do, uh, especially during this lockdown time. I know uh, even in America, there's a lot of countries that are going through a lockdown right now. Uh, but I think the one thing that God wants to hear and the one thing that God loves to hear uh, is our confession, our confession to the Lord, our confession to the Holy Trinity of just how much we love them at this time. When, you, when I just kind of went through those stats about all these countries that were supposed to love God so much, right? These like Italy is the center of the Catholic Church. And you have France, you know, France and England and, and these countries that were just considered godly countries, Spain, right? And now just the people who really love God, especially the young people too, the the disparity of just how much people don't want to believe anymore and how much uh, secularized they've become. It's really a sad thing. And I think this is why also for all of us here, we really, really, really uh, need to confess our love to the Lord each and every day and every prayer. And I hope that to all of us, we'll go through this too. Now, um, the very interesting thing I wanted to bring up, especially from today's uh, message that Sunseem gave, he talked about three stages, right? So everyone, you guys remember, he talked about three stages. And the three stages are what? Uh, he's like, you know, there's Old Testament, New Testament, Complete Testament. But Sunseem was always saying that you can explain everything in three stages. Like, what does that mean? And then he starts talking about his grandfather. It wasn't, wasn't really interesting. Talking about his grandfather. I'm like, oh, okay. You talk about your grandfather. It's like, you know, God couldn't choose me from the time of my father, right? Because if he, it would have been too late. If, if my father was living in Kongju, where my grandfather was, and then he moved over here after I was born there, like, you know, he, he, it was too late for him to come here to be raised and born in uh, the Wormingdong area, right? And he said that it was from his grandfather's time that he chose him. And his grandfather was in Kongju, which is uh, like, you know, it's like, it's like, well, probably back then it's even more countryside, more village-like. And he moved to uh, the Wormingdong area. Right, and then from there he had the father, and then the father had uh, Sun Zingim, and then you know this is where he was born in this in in his hometown, and he you know he grew affinity. Well, he said you know he hated it, but also grew affinity to it too, and it made me kind of think of my life too. And there's actually a, a pastor from Indonesia, uh, and she also reminded me of the situation why Sun Zingim keeps talking about his grandfather, and it reminded me of my situation too. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm from Canada. My parents are Korean, and they immigrated to uh, Canada. Canada, I believe in like 1974 or three or maybe five, 74, it's, 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 you're talking a long time, like 45, 46 years ago, right? And uh, they moved, crazy part is this, my mom's eldest brother went to uh, Kode, which is like Korea University, one of the best universities in Korea, and he actually won a writing contest. Crazy, sounds crazy, right? 
he won a writing contest and the prize was like him and 20 people get to immigrate to Canada for free. So go figure, right? So my, you know, he takes the whole family, goes to Canada, and then I was born in Canada. Now, the thing that was interesting is around 2012, 2013, uh, this is when I was living in Korea. I was at the Lord's Church, and um, I was able to see my family, my relatives. And uh, one time I went down to my father's hometown. And I also went to visit my aunts and uncles in like Daejeon and Busan and stuff like that too, right? And the interesting thing is when I talked to my, uh, talked to my aunt, and I said, hey, aunt, um, you know, like, what do I know about my grandfather? All I know that he was a pastor. So I knew my grandfather was a pastor. And the uh, interesting thing was, she said, she started telling me stories about my grandfather. And he said that my grandfather was, you know, was in that time where I think it was like Japan took over, but it was really hard times and struggling in Korea. But my, my grandfather had a good business, so he was able to support the entire family. But reading the Bible, he read the Bible, read the story of Moses, how Moses, you know, he went to Midian, and then he came back to save his people from Egypt. And he got the inspiration. I'm, I'm, God inspired him. And then he planted a church in his hometown. Planted a church, evangelized 50 people, and then their pastor came, and then he went to go plant another church. And he started planting churches, and I asked her, like, how many churches did he plant? And she said to me, she can only remember 23. I was like, 23? Like, she said, I'm like, how do you remember 23? But she's like, I remember, I think at least 23. I'm like, and she's like, and that's all, only the ones I remember. So I was like, whoa, my grandfather was like a pioneering, you know, church planting pastor. And he was like, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. And so all I know is a minimum 20. And I just found that out recently. Like, no, we're talking about like within the next last seven, eight years, right? Six, seven years. And he planted 23 churches. And I was like, wow. So I, I really thought about my path here to Providence too. Um, not to say my dad's not spiritual. He's an elder at his Christian church, at the former faith church. But uh, my grandfather is like the one that set the condition. And one thing Sunsim talks about Korea is like, you know, Korea, the, the Christian gospel has not been in Korea for a very long time. And he said that, yeah, if you're three, four, five generations in, it's like you're so blessed in Korea. Uh, God blesses you because it's such a short, um, it's such a short history. And uh, I'm a third generation Christian from Korea. And it's just really amazing that my grandfather was pioneering churches all in the region where Sunsim is. And the last church that he pioneered was Gongju, where Sunseen's grandfather was, as crazy as that is, right? So, you know, for me, I was so blessed uh, just realizing uh, how much uh, God has been looking after me from the time of my grandfather. And I hope that all of you guys, too, two things you can, re you can realize from this. Two things is, number one is, check on your grandfather, right? Check to see, you know, what, you know, how, you know, what did he do? Or what did she, your grandmother do? Right? Where, where does this righteous, where did this condition come from for you to come to this history? But the second thing I want you to realize is this. If your grandfather has that, like, if, if it's from your grandfather and that condition is set for you to come and, and for you to be blessed, I want you to think about this. The second thing you need to realize is, is you right now, the conditions you set and how well you do will affect your ancestor, your descendants, I mean, right? It'll affect your descendants. Your grandchildren will be affected by you, which means that the things that you do, if God is looking at things from the time of your grandfather, you got to think to yourself, not only what did my grandfather, my grandmother do, but... What can I do? How well do I have to do for my descendants to do well also? Right? So I, I really hope that uh, we can understand that, you know, don't, don't just kind of get yourself in a position where you're always wondering why you're blessed. But you got to kind of look in a situation of how you can bless other people too. Right? And that, that's, that is the conditions you set right now and the things that you do you know i, I want to kind of break it in and go into another song that i really really i love when i first heard this song i'm telling you uh those of you know pastor chungo he sang this live okay uh this song is called oasis and everyone knows this a lot of people know this song right and this song oasis is actually originally from japan right there's a revelation receiver very musically inclined Re revelation receiver and he made this song from a revelation he received from God. And at that time, well, it was the Holy Son, right? And at that time, he's going through a really dark time. He's going through really difficulty, big difficulty. And he's like asking God is like, you know, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling so much, but are you with me? Like, have you, you know, do you love, are you with me? 
And this is uh, the revelation he received. And he took the revelation and uh, he basically wrote a song from this revelation. And God is saying, you are my oasis in this world of like desert, in this world that has nothing there, but you're my oasis, right? When you look down in this world, you see my heart, right? Uh, you see everything about me. And when you cry, I cried with you. And when you were, you know, when you were joyful, it's like it was together, right? Can you feel it? I was with you during all those times, right? So I hope that uh, when you listen to this song, uh, you realize, yeah, it's, there's times that you can feel alone. Uh, but through this song, it's going to be in Korean because I, I just love the Korean version of it. I'm sure a, a lot of you already know the lyrics. Uh, let's listen together the song Oasis. I'm 
지금 바로 열고 밖으로 달려 나와서 맞아줄 수 있겠니 지금 나와 줄수 있겠니 And that is the song Oasis, made by Revelation Receiver in Japan. Great song. I'm sure many people are moved by it. Uh, it's something, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. It's just because it, it's very emotional, but it's, it's something that uh, a lot of people do go through uh, as they're going through their life uh, in this history. It's not easy, uh, but I hope that uh, everyone, uh, as you uh, listen to today's podcast, my second of the day, March 18th, uh, 2020, it is the morning star drive. I know that some of you are in lockdown, so you're probably not even driving, but just kind of listening to it at home. But I hope that you enjoyed today, and I hope that uh, everyone will just really uh, be able to have a wonderful, I don't know how this, this sounds weird, but a wonderful, wonderful lockdown. All right. So everyone have a wonderful time. Have a nice rest of the day, and we'll see you again. Gotta let go. Gotta let go. And let it happen. And let it happen. Yeah. Believe in yourself and believe it's with somebody. Gotta believe in yourself. Oh, 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 oh.